Quick announcement, guys. The Avengers Initiative is a go. So I'm looking for some help with this Thor-inspired workout program. It'll help you put on some muscle and feel like an Asgardian getting ready to go to war against Thanos. If you're interested in the program, fill out an application, and I'll be in touch with you very soon. What's up, Star Wars fans? My name is Prince, and... I'm an urban acolyte. I want to shoot with y'all about some rumored shows possibly coming to Disney+. Plus. That's the name of the Disney streaming service, if you didn't know. So the rumor, according to We've Got This Covered, is that Poe Dameron, Finn, Lando Calrissian, and Kira may be getting their own individual shows on Disney+. Plus. Now, I'm not a big fan of We Got This Covered, so I don't know how to take this news. But for now, I'm going to call it a rumor. Uh, maybe they actually do have some inside sources at Lucasfilm or at Disney who would know something about the discussion uh, going on with these projects. But until I hear something from Jason Ward at Making Star Wars or the guys over at Star Wars News Net, let's just consider this as something that might happen or it might not happen. But there are three reasons these rumored shows caught my attention, and it's based on things I've said in past videos, actually as recently as yesterday's video. So the Lando and Kira shows are interesting because remember back in the summer when I shared my thoughts on Solo? I think I did a live stream about a trilogy with Darth Maul as the antagonist. I think some people thought I was saying that Maul should get his own trilogy, and I was kinda saying that, but not the way that they assumed. What I was saying was there could be a trilogy of films had those other spin-off projects still been a thing that all dealt with the story involving Crimson Dawn and Maul. Now, if there was gonna be a series about specifically Kira, it would be more like a 10 hour movie, assuming there were gonna be 10 episodes that are roughly 45 minutes to an hour. Now, however much time would pass in the series, or if there were multiple seasons, we could see Kira's story and learn Maul's story from the time he left Mandalore when Order 66 went down, and when he winds up on Malachor years later when Ezra meets him during season two of Star Wars Rebels. I guess that would have been about 16 years after Order 66 or about three years before the Battle of Yavin, maybe four years. But right now, the only thing I know is that he's been hiding out on Dathomir or at least running his operation from Dathomir. Either way, it would be really cool to have this story where we get to see more of Maul, especially if we get to see Ray Park in action as Maul, now that he's recovered from his hip surgery, would also be awesome to get Sam Witwer back voicing Maul. And I'll admit, I've been one who wants new stories about a different time period, but hey man, I'm always down for more Maul. I love Maul. I love him so much that I did a real life Jedi video where I'm gonna show you guys how to train like Maul. And that video is actually finished, but there's a guide to help people who are serious about the training. So as soon as I finish writing the guide, the video will go live. But I think I got carried away talking about Kira, Crimson Dawn, and Maul. But don't forget about the possible Lando series too. The speculation right now is that it would deal with an even younger Lando Calrissian. So that Donald Glover uh, might not be the person playing Lando. And I don't know if Lando's popular enough to have his own series that doesn't involve Han unless it's played by someone that's really charismatic. But who knows though, just like people felt like Donald Glover couldn't play Lando as well as Billy D. Well, now I feel like someone can't play young Lando like Childish Gambino. But I'll say this though, it would be cool if Lando dropped something in episode nine that set up the story for the Lando series, if we actually get one. We'll just have to wait and see for now. But okay, so the Poe Dameron series, this could be interesting and I think it would be something unlike we've seen in Star Wars. And that's a story that deals with a fighter pilot. I actually think this series could be very popular, especially if the Cassian Endor series is well received. Think of the Poe Dameron series as like being a mirror to Cassian series in the same way the characters are like mirrors of one another. And I'm saying mirrors as in opposites. So we think of Poe as the good guy, the flyboy hero, but he doesn't actually follow orders. I mean, that's one reason so many people pick Poe's side over Vice Admiral Holdo. But look at a character like Cassian. Cassian follows orders without question, 
Both of them kind of come from veteran families. Poe's parents fought in the Galactic Rebellion. They may have even known Cassian depending on when they joined the Rebellion. Cassian's parents died in the Clone Wars as separatists. So he was like a by any means necessary kind of guy, but it was all following orders. Well, until he didn't follow orders when they went off to scare him. But the rumor right now is that Poe's series will be about the New Republic military before he leaves and joins the resistance. I think it would be interesting to see him investigate in the First Order against orders, but the whole point of there being a younger Poe Dameron is in case Oscar Isaac does not play the role as Poe. It would add more to the character knowing more of his backstory, but I honestly would like to see what Poe's character is doing after episode nine wraps, assuming Poe survives. But okay, so that leaves a rumor about Finn. And I wanted to save this one for last because it's something I've been suggesting since at least a year ago. So we could actually get a young Finn story, but Finn was a cadet with the First Order. I'm not sure how exciting a series would be about a cadet within the First Order, but hey man, someone creative could pull it off. I'm going to go with this is about Finn's character post episode nine's events. So let's go back to the start of me covering Star Wars here on YouTube. Those videos about Finn becoming a Jedi and the sequel trilogy really blew up. And that's what grew people following me. Videos about Finn being force sensitive and Star Wars Rebels. I mean, if people are really concerned about my numbers on YouTube, I mean, there it is right there. Star Wars Rebels is over and I haven't had much to say about Finn or Snoke and those tend to be my most viewed videos. But anyway, let's get back to my speculation that Finn was force sensitive or is force sensitive. All along for at least the last year or so, I've said that I don't want Finn's force sensitivity to be explored in the movies, not the current ones. It's why I had no problem with what people felt was Finn being underused in The Last Jedi. The focus of episode eight should have been on the thing going on with Luke, Kylo Ren, and Rey, and how that plays a part in the resistance in the First Order. You know, the bigger conflict, the Star War. Finn had to find his place in that story, the same way that Rey had to find her place. Their place together is fighting with the Resistance against the First Order, but neither of them had made that choice in The Force Awakens. They were just kind of thrown together due to circumstance. Now, when Finn awoke from his coma, his intentions were to leave with Rey, just like he asked her to do at Maz's castle. When Finn rescued Rey on Starkiller base, he probably would have said, okay, Rey, they got BB-8, can we go now? Like, together? Together, together? <laughs> so Finn had to decide to stay. If he is force sensitive, but he leaves the story, I mean, that's it. There's no point in exploring that path because he's no longer part of the Star War. You know, the war between the Resistance and the First Order, the war to restore balance to the Force. You guys understanding me? So let's get back to what I've been hinting at regarding Finn and this whole Force sensitive thing. I said, hey man, didn't Kyle Katarn get his own adventures later after all the rebellion stuff went down and he had time to look into his own background? Kyle ended up going on his own mission where he discovered his force sensitivity. Now, I'm not saying something exactly like that should happen with Finn, but if he is, it would be its own story independent from what's going on with Rey and Kylo Ren and what sounds like the introduction of the Knights of Ren, the Acolytes of the Beyond, and possibly Palpatine's contingency plan that involved the Sith religion. Hey man, I just dropped a bunch of stuff on y'all that I wanna talk about in another video later in the week. So make a mental note of all that stuff that I just said because I'm gonna come back to it. But anyway, yeah, if you're still holding out hope for Finn to be force sensitive, do not go into episode nine with that expectation. I mean, I know the big homie Chris Rines tweeted something about uh, lightsabers and stuff to John Boyega. Maybe John was, was kind of saying, yeah, bro, we got you. Finn is gonna do some Jedi stuff in episode nine. But I mean, don't go hoping for that. If it happens, I mean, I want it to happen when Finn is front and center. It's not a story about Rey or Kylo Ren or any of that other stuff because, hey man, it's, it's too much. It's just too much, right? I mean, remember what I said heading into The Last Jedi about doing too much? Now people, they say they want too much, they say they wanted all this stuff in The Last Jedi, but I'm telling you, 
No, you don't. They don't want it. They don't want all that heat, man. If episode eight gave everyone the sun, the moon, and the stars, it would have been too much and people would have completely missed it. I mean, I'm not even gonna tell you to search your feelings because I already know it's true. Studies prove it. When people have too many choices or too many options, they don't choose anything. It literally goes over their head. It's like they don't see it. So if you didn't like The Last Jedi, I'm gonna tell you the truth. You probably wouldn't have liked it even if Ryan Johnson included all that other stuff that people feel that he left out regarding their unanswered questions. But yeah, that's really all I got to say. There's some pretty interesting rumors out there about what's coming after episode nine. But anyway, quick reminder, if you're interested in getting in with this Thor workout group, fill out an application. There's a link in the video uh, comments. I'm looking to start that group next week. Don't forget about the Broly workout, or if you never saw the Broly video that I posted, hey, I've got a Super Saiyan workout I came up with while I was actually waiting to see the Broly movie last month, and I still gotta post my review on the on the movie. It, the, the workout is totally free, and uh, there's also a link for you to get that down in the uh, comments section. But anyway, what do you think about these rumored shows that are coming to Disney Plus? Do you think Lucasfilm should do what Marvel is doing where they continue the stories from the movies over on the streaming service? Also, which shows do you want to see the most? Actually, I think I'll do a poll on the rumored Disney Plus show that you want to see the most, but also explain your reason in the comments below after you post uh, up on the poll. And <laughs> if you post on the poll, <laughs> if you like this video, hey man, Hit that like button, share it with your friends. If you have something to share with the Urban Act community, post it down below in the comments and I'll be checking back to see what you all have to say. And if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and click that subscribe button so that you can take your first steps towards becoming an Urban Acolyte. Embark on the journey of becoming the hero of your own story and become a force for change in your community. Make sure to enable notifications and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and the gram so you'll know when I'm going live with Star Wars chats and playing the Old Republic. And if you're interested in getting deeper into this real life Jedi mall training, make sure you keep checking back for my link so that you can get your free training manual. Well, that's all I got for this video. So thanks for watching. Y'all keep on breathing and may the force of others be with you. Always.